Hey YouTube, Robert here with Coastal GX and today we're going to be installing these Rob2 Pro lights by Colite on my front runner Slimline 2 roof rack. Yes friends, so Colite's been around since 2016. They sent me two sets of these awesome four inch by two and a half inch lights that you see right here. I'll, I'm gonna show you, I already have them installed on top. I'll show you where I installed them. But, you know, we still have to run the cables and we still have to, you know, get them set up. So I'm gonna tell you how I did all of that. Okay, but first let me tell you a little bit about these lights right here. You know, they are small, but they pack a powerful punch. Okay, at uh, 32, over 3200 lumens is what they're reported as, uh, as producing. Now they come in three different patterns, okay? They, you can either get them in spot, you can get them uh, flood or diffused uh, flood. As a matter of fact, they're even, they even, Colite even sent me these extra lenses, okay? If I wanna get them in, in yellow or you know amber or you know if I wanna get them in white, it's very easy. I'll show you how you know, easy it is to you know, swap the lenses. So you have choices there. They also sent me some mounting hardware, okay? And they sent me these, uh, this harness right here, a couple of harnesses, you know, to set them up. They come with their Deutsch connectors, and uh, so it's waterproof, you know. Uh, speaking of waterproof, the lights are waterproof themselves, they're dustproof, and uh, they're just very well built. You know, I can't wait to test them out. So Coilite will sell you these lights as a set, okay? That's gonna be two pairs, you know, uh, and each, every time that you buy them, you know, it's cost about 82 bucks, 85 bucks, you know, and uh, of course, you know, I'm gonna have a discount code, so hopefully, you know, you'll get some more savings out of that. But these are, you know, this, it's an aluminum uh, housing, and they are so tiny, man. They are only four by two and a half inches, and uh, they have these brackets and different types of brackets, I guess, where you could, uh, you know, explain to Colite, you know, what your setup is going to be. And they're so friendly and uh, they're very good at communicating. So they can go ahead and tell you, you know what, you know, if you're going to be using it for this. This is probably the best application for my application. This was the best setup right here. As you can tell, I have a front runner uh, Slimline 2 roof rack okay it's been on there for a long time and uh i just resisted in putting any stuff any any lights up there because you know i would have to do you know the job myself and i'm not a big D, uh, diy <laughs> dwi i'm not a big diy type of guy you know so you know i was like oh man maybe i can't do this you know so what i wanted to do i always wanted to have two in the back these are gonna be uh, diffused of uh, white, okay? Uh, that's gonna be the color in these right here. Now, let me show you, you know, what I have over here on this other side, you know, which is the passenger side. You know, uh, we're gonna have two more, but I decided to get amber, okay? I put the amber lenses on this side over here, diffused as well, because I really wanted you know, some lights. I'm not trying to blind traffic or anyone like that. You know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, uh, illuminate uh, uh, the surroundings around my vehicle. So I have some sort of, you know, lighting when I'm setting up camp, you know, if it's at night, you know, I, I just need to see what's going uh, on around me. And that's why I did what I did. Now I took the liberty of removing my, my recovery boards of removing my shovel and uh, removing, you know, my water tank up there so I could have more space when I'm running the cables, when I'm taking care of the installation. Speaking of installation, as you can see, I already installed these right here. Now, because of the way uh, I have the, the roof rack set up, you know, it was designed in mind, you know, to take care of, 
my uh, uh, other accessories that I had up here, you know, I never thought about, you know, lighting or anything like that, you know, when I was doing that. So I had to modify, you know, some of the, some of the brackets where, you know, the lights are attached to. Uh, this one right here, I needed a little space, you know, to move out. So I found some old brackets that I had laying around and uh, all I did was, you know, make some modifications, you know, cut it up a little bit, measured it and, uh, you know, just to make sure that it wasn't going to interfere with the shovel and it fit perfectly right there. The next one right here was a little trickier. So as you can see, you know, uh, it needed a bend, you know, so I needed to drop the light a little lower uh, compared to the other one uh, just to so that you can clear the recovery boards and I can still use this right here and it still be at a at a, at a at a place where it's not going to interfere with a door or anything along those lines and uh, so it's really neat speaking remember I was telling you about the lenses so if you remove these right here these little hex screws okay this comes out and then you can just replace the lens with whatever you want say if you change your mind you don't want amber you know, you want to go back to the white color, you can do so, or maybe you want something concentrated as in spot, you know, because maybe you want to move it to your ditch lights or somewhere else. You can certainly do that as well. Uh, the lights only draw about 25 watts each, so it's not pulling a lot of power from you. But, uh, uh, you know, from my understanding, you know, these lights will go ahead and, and produce a lot anyway. And for what I need, you know, I don't need, I'm not looking for, you know, huge driving lights, you know, that are going to blind everyone. I just want to look, I, I just want to be able to, to be aware of my surroundings uh, or near, near the camp, you know, just to see what's going on. If there's something bad that happens and I need to get out or whatever, I can certainly just light it up and it'll be good enough. Okay. So I'm sure that this is going to be more than enough. Um, other, another reason that I'm doing this video is because, like I mentioned earlier, I've never seen any videos uh, that have anything to do with the Front Runner Slimline 2 and run, actually running the cables on the GX460. So I'm going to give it a try. I, I experimented not too long ago with another video uh, where I installed some lights, uh, another light, and uh, I found out that you know, these roof racks are so well designed, it was so easy for me to run that cable. And that had, you know, kind of inspired me, <laughs> you know, uh, give me the courage to go ahead and tackle this other project. Okay, my friends, so first of all, I wanted to take a look at the wiring harness that uh, Colite sent me. Really cool. I mean, it has these Deutsch plugs, okay? So it's gonna make sure that it's got a nice seal, you know, keep it nice. Uh, uh, and, and protect it from the elements, okay? Like rain and dust and all that good stuff. Especially at the beach, right? Which is where we're always at. And they also have a little rocker switch and a relay. However, for my application, I already have a switch panel. So these are gonna go, okay? The Deutsch connectors that connect directly to the lights are gonna go directly to my switch panel. I'm gonna join them up at the right at the end when it's about to connect them and then they're going to be plugged in there into one of my channels. So I'm going to have to do some cutting. ready the rough two lights are here and there is just a tiny 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 little space right here when I when my son and I um, installed the roof rack years ago you know we wanted it as close as possible to the 
roof of sandy okay so there isn't much space as it is um that's why they call it slimline right you know you want to keep it kind of kind of closer to the to the roof but that means that there's very little space these right here are perfect for it okay just perfect it's almost like they custom made it for uh sandy over here and uh so it was very easy because the slimline too as you guys know have these channels where you can simply you know just attach hardware okay slide it back and forth do whatever in this case you see i have this loop here i'm just gonna remove it and it comes off so i don't need that um why am i removing it because as you can see the cable that's coming out of this uh light right here i have put it up here and then i got some of this front runner key slot rubber that just hugs and seals this hole okay this channel all right so i just you just put your your cable through there and you run the t-slot rubber all the way to a certain point that you cut it and it's supposed to keep it up here and then you continue then you attach your cable you attach your Deutsch connector, the one that we cut just a little while ago, and then we're going to continue to run it. We're going to do the same thing for this one right here, and we're going to find the best route for it. I doubt, I doubt if it's going to work like that for every, for all of the cables, because you know there's only limited amount of space uh, where you can run it. So there's going to be some spots where. You're just gonna have to, you know, use tie wraps, or I don't know, maybe something else that that might work with it. Um, and I was kind of trying to avoid that, but hey, sometimes it is what it is, right? You know, we adapt. But if we can make it as clean as possible in certain spaces, man, I, I, I'm gonna be happy with that. That that will be good enough for me. So let's get back to work. Okay, so check it out. I, I, think it, I think it looks pretty good. See that? Cable just goes up in there. I was able to use that T-slot rubber and uh, place that cable into the, the channel there, the little opening. Now, I need to tell you that only one cable is able to fit there, you know, so I'll explain a little bit more, but uh, yeah the only thing that's exposed is the deutsch connector right there now how could that i mean if i would have just cut those that uh, uh that connector and i could have just soldered it you know done a little extra work and um you know placed it in there it wouldn't be exposed like that but i don't know i mean, I, I don't know I, I just don't feel like it I just left it as it is. It's not, it doesn't bother me. It's not too bad. You know, I, it, good, it could always be better. It could always be cleaner. But that's what I did. All right? So don't judge me too hard. However, I got to tell you something. So, you know, let's get back to this. Uh, remember I told you that you cannot fit both cables into that slot. So now it's like, oh, no, what are we going to do? You know, because we have this uh, situation where, where are we going to run that other cable to keep it, you know, to try to keep it still looking kind of clean? You know, we can't, we can't fit them all on the channels, you know, so what are we going to do? Well, I got you covered. I don't know if you can see that little thing right there in that corner, but let me tell you, this is, this is what it is. Okay, this is my possible solution to this issue these mag daddy magnets and i'll leave them in the description so 
you know, they can be very useful, okay? The magnets are extremely strong and, uh, you know, you could just zip tie them, you know, zip tie your, your cables, you know, onto this little tiny magnet, very unintrusive, and you can just hide it and, you know, hey, that's gonna solve your problem. After all, we're here to solve problems, right? Not cause them and, you know, find uh, some sort of solution and we adapt. And uh, so let's give this a try, let's continue. So I cleaned it up a little bit better as you can see, uh, put a zip tie up here to make sure that the wire would um, kind of, I don't know, retract a little bit more closer to the top beam and then of course, you know, I zip tied it to that little magnet, you know, keep it out of the way and now we're going to continue. I'm going to zip tie it right here to put some pressure and then I already have the other end of the Deutsch cable that's going to go to this second uh, little light. It is difficult to do a video under these conditions. If it's not crazy hot, like a hundred and some degrees, crazy humid, and now you got a thunderstorm or some sort of rain cloud going by. So we're going to need to put away some of the stuff and uh, continue as soon as it passes, hopefully. We got a little break from the rain. Let's continue. We're just going to have to do it in between uh, rain clouds. I already started, you know, putting the other, as you can see right here, started putting the other uh, T-slot, T-slot uh, rubber um, seal right there on top. Now, it doesn't really matter, guys. I mean, I just covered it, you know, so this thing is not flopping around or whatever. But remember, we're going to have a shovel here and you know the max tracks are going to be here so all of this stuff is going to be you know semi covered anyway you know but you know if you guys are, are real sticklers and you just love this you know and want to want to get the job right and you know for your own personal satisfaction you know yeah you know go ahead and and and, and do it the best you can um so right here at this point this cable that you see up here this belongs to this uh, Colite uh, Rob, uh, 2 Pro series uh, lamp that I have here on the passenger side towards the rear. Then this one's gonna go through the top, okay? Continue in the channel right here. All right, as far as I can take it. And this one right here, another one, the, the one closest to the uh, passenger, front passenger side, this one's also going to go here. Now, I haven't decided if I should, you know, put it in this other rail along with the other two that are coming from the back or if I should, you know, keep it on the slot on top. You know, it it's, doesn't really matter, I guess. You know, it's, it's whatever works the best at this point. So I'm just going to see. I'm going to try on both sides, you know. Uh, let me get to work and then I will update you with another shot, okay? Okay, here comes the rain again. So let me give you an update while the rain gives us a break over here. This is how, is it, how it's going so far. It's really cool. I really like the way it's, it's going. So that light right there, you know, like I said, I ran it through the top. Cables are nice, 
hidden, okay? And the other, the other two chase lights from the very rear, those are hiding behind this channel right here, okay? You can see it right there. And no way you can see them. Um, I was, I had to use a magnet behind this part right here. But as you can tell, they have, mine had uh, already some pre-built, uh, you know, pre-drilled holes here from the factory. So I was just able to use this and, and keep the, the wires nicely tucked back, back there. And as you can see, you know, I have all the channels back here. There's some spots where you cannot do this because of the bolts that run down. So that's the reason why you cannot dip this all the way in but that's fine i mean you've used these right here and like i said the recovery boards are going to be on top so you wouldn't be able to see this anyway you could have the the wires all messed up there if you wanted to i guess if that's that's your 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 style you know i just wanted to make it look a little nicer so at this point i decided remember i told you i didn't know what to do i hadn't decided what to do with this cable the cable coming from this particular light so what I did is I just, you know, threw it to the back and I merged them with the two chase lights that are coming from the back and they're going to be tucked right here. So what am I going to do with a cable that comes from the top here? You can see it right here. I am throwing it behind the bracket. Okay. And then it's going to be behind this right here and it'll eventually merge. I'm going to use a magnet back here. And it's going to merge right here. And then I'm going to bring them down. Okay. I'm going to bring these down. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm going to have to solder some of them. Uh, or, you know, connect them the way, you know, the best way possible. And they're going to run down this pillar right here. Into the engine bay. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use two KC Highlight uh, Universal Wire Hiders right here so that this doesn't look all nasty and messy going down the pillar. So let's see, let's see how it turns out. I don't know here, you see all of these, you know, these might have to just stay here. I might use a piece of either conduit or something to, to put them through. I, I still don't know, you know, or maybe I'll just zip tie them and, and forget about it, you know, and key spots. I really don't. I'm not too, uh, you know, concerned about this segment from here to here, you know, unless somebody is really looking for it. And this is not, the, Sandy is definitely not a trailer queen. You know, she is not a show truck, you know, so I really don't care about that. So the harness to each one of those lights, you know, it, it's provided some length, but it's not enough. It's not going to make it all the way to the switch panel. So in order to, for me to get that done, I need to use, so my, well, this is 14 gauge cable and that's just fine. I think the cable they have is, uh, is 16 maybe, uh, but this is gonna be fine. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to extend it. So I need to measure all the way into the switch panel. It's gonna be different lengths for different lights because Obviously, the closer the light is to the switch panel, well, the longer, you know, the remaining wires that they provided. So some of them are going to require more than others, and that's just fine. Got my shrink tubing. Okay. And then I'm going to, at my... Woo! Butt connectors. Make sure they're nice and wound up. And I'm going to connect those to these right here.
and that is what we're gonna do for the rest of them okay I'm not gonna waste your time you know on doing this on every single one of them but that's pretty much it um, I will have all of these uh, material all the materials and, and whatever I use here I will have in the video description if you guys are interested the clouds are coming back the wind is picking up so I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to to uh, go ahead and add this uh, heat shrink you see I already got all my connections so all the lights are coming from the top all the connections are done we're finished all I need to do is go ahead and put some heat shrink on top of these uh, uh, junctions okay where the connectors went I, I mean they have the butt connector they have heat shrink then they have tape electrical tape and then I don't know maybe it's overkill but I, I'd rather play it safe Now I'm going to try to figure out how to bring these um, cables into the engine bay and run them all the way to my switch panel over there. And uh, now you see this, these are my, um, my, my pods, okay, my ditch lights. And what I did with these, I, I just simply brought them in and I ran them through here through the hood and uh, they come out over there so that was pretty clean and uh, but these uh, there's obviously there's no space through that so um, and I really don't want to send them through this right here so I'm thinking of perhaps bringing them in through here this panel is removable okay it's right here and then this one is removable as well and then perhaps sending them all in one bunch with that conduit perhaps you know in through here hopefully there'll be some space for it if not I'm gonna have to uh, zip tie them or something I'm gonna have to zip tie them and uh, run them along the firewall all the way to the switch panel over there Okay guys, I'm gonna use more of this sleeve to go ahead and encase the harness. And uh, so it looks kind of a little normal back there. Okay, the sleeve is complete. Now we're gonna go ahead and Put it back, back there, along that firewall. I was able to secure the cable back there to the back, like I said, and uh, I went ahead and I surrounded it with that screen. And uh, so now it's been zip tied and I mean, I, I went a little overboard <laughs> with the cable, so I am gonna have a, a lot of wasted cable, unfortunately, but I'll leave it in the scrap box. But uh, these cables from the sources up there are gonna end up here. Now, there's a big screw up, big screw up. And that is, um, I forgot to label which, uh, I forgot to label which lights are which so I'm gonna have to test it out and then so I'm gonna waste a lot of time there but then I'm going to combine I'm gonna combine the cables to my lights over here the co lights the ROP2 pros that are facing the passenger side these are going to be uh, together in one channel so I'm gonna have to combine those two wires positive positive negative negative uh, when I put it in the switch assembly and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing to 
the lights that are facing the back okay so yeah big mistake um well eh, i wouldn't call it a big mistake i think a big mistake there could be other big mistakes I, it's more of a inconvenience and uh because now i'm gonna have to wait a little longer you know that's something i should have done and it would have saved me some time so don't do what i did as i said i'm gonna have to go one by one okay one by one with each one of these cables and run them you know i'm gonna have to uh, cut them and uh, get enough um, of that wire so i can put it in the negative channel and the positive channel and uh, that's how i'm gonna be able to test it now i gotta make sure that i put this in uh in a a, a slot that has a, a, at least a 15 amp uh fuse so i'm gonna see if i can locate that if not i'm gonna have to stick to the 20 amps over here um so you're probably wondering hey robert why didn't you just use the fuse that came with the harness it's got a 15 uh, amp fuse you know why not just use that well you know the reason is because these have different fitments okay you know so this has to be the right size and boom so what I did was I just found uh, I went and bought some extra fuses and uh, I replaced them so got to do that first okay We'll test it out let's see okay there we go that's one of the rear lights check it out oh there we go okay nice so that's the furthest one from the group so now we know and uh, look it's shining all the way over there in my mess so now we got to see if we can find this one and it would be nice to find this one so that we can pair them both together at the switch assembly and they can be they can share the same channel so let's go so the mystery has been solved i identified which are the cables that um lead to which lights in particular so first we're going to do channel four on the switch assembly and uh because channel four is the one that's gonna do, it's gonna have the lights that are gonna be on the driver's side. I mean, excuse me, on the passenger side. So as I said, I need to combine these uh, uh, cables, okay, these wires, I'm sorry. I have to do positive with positive and negative with negative on the two lights or two lamps that are gonna be in the same channel and in this case, it's gonna be, you know, the one in the front for the right and one in the rear for the right. So, both of them are working. It's a good deal. All the, all the wires have been connected. And now it's time to put the lid back on it. Let's do a little recap. So, let's take a look again at how it came out. See? I mean, not bad for a first timer, okay? Uh, I think it's pretty clean. You can't see the, you can't see the wires from the outside. And here in the back, it's, you know, it's just this part right here. Let's take a look on the other side. So you can't really tell. I mean, the cables are nice and secure. You know, the lights are placed there correctly you know where they're gonna fit just right okay now the only thing we got going on here is this little mess right here I'm gonna see how what I can do about this uh, see if I can use that KC universal um, cable hider you know the rain wants to threaten me again so that's coming around uh, in order for me to do that I'm gonna have to 
clean this area and uh, use some alcohol afterwards and then you know carefully place the double-sided tape on that thing um, on the universal holder and then try to hide these cables in there I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hide them all because there's just they're they are way too bulky and uh, unless I man I can't really do that I was gonna say unless I rip up rip off uh, this housing to save some space but I don't think that's gonna happen oh uh, let's move on here you know the as the cables come into the come into the cabin I mean the come into the engine bay you know they, they did pretty pretty good pretty good the cables are nice in that uh, mesh that screen uh, conduit and uh, you know I mean it is what it is I'm, I'm happy with with the tur how it turned out and I guess that's all that matters and, you know I don't smell smoke I didn't see anything sparking uh, those are all good signs Let's try to clean this up Best we can. In this area because I'm going to try to install a couple of, uh, of those KC wire hiders. Now, it should come with a little alcohol pad. If not, I'm going to have to go get one from inside, but got to, you know, clean it up with alcohol and then attach the the 3M double-sided tape to it. This is it. This simple little thing. This is that KC wire hider that I'm telling you about. And uh, it's got this, uh, you're not familiar with it. Almost looks like a, like a windshield wiper, but it's got this opening right here. You can open it like that, okay? And uh, this is where you would hide your cable. I'm concerned because I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be big enough. I mean, I bought two of them thinking they, that, that would be enough, but uh, I don't think that's going to do the trick. So I'm just going to do the best I can. It has this little alcohol pad, so I'm going to use that. And then it's got the little tiny strips of, it's got several of these. So that's going to go in the back of this thing supposed to apply it and uh, put some pressure you know so that it can go ahead and stick to the windshield let me see if I can measure this up it's easy to cut now that we measured it and cut it now I'm gonna attach these double-sided strips of of uh, 3m tape to uh, you know along along the flat side that's gonna be attached to the windshield. Now, I'm sure that there's a better way of doing this. I don't know it, okay? But uh, I'm using this X-Acto knife to detach, detach the double-sided film here from it and this was such a pain for me so it came out this will get me started and then let's let's continue to do this out there doing this thing I'm very concerned about the rain clouds let's see if I can continue to bring it down Okay, so while this one adheres to the to the window, I'm gonna start bringing in a second one. See how this one works. So everything was going great until it wasn't going great. It, there's always got to be something when you're doing 
you know, a do it DIY project, you screw it all up. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll fix it later. But ugh. this is this is how it came out, guys. I screwed up, you know, installing this thing and uh, I had to kind of pile it up over here because I didn't take into consideration this uh, windshield wiper. So I had to pile this, I had to cut right here, use a screen and put it on top of the other. Uh, so I don't know, man, I don't know. I mean, if, if you're gonna put all those lights, I would probably recommend only installing maybe two or bringing down two cables over here and go to town over there. I, I think you have more space on that side. But uh, yeah, I'm done, I'm, I'm, I'm done for for installing stuff up there but uh hey it was pretty good so now all we need to do is go test it out right I and mean, we've got to go test it out i couldn't wait to fire up the rob 2 pro lights i honestly didn't know what to expect from these compact lights i was pleasantly surprised to see how they illuminated the dark dirt road these lenses are the diffused flood beams, so I can only imagine what the spotlights could do. The passenger side lights with the yellow lenses are exactly what I needed. The light with this particular lens was effective, but not overwhelming. So I think it's going to work perfectly for me. I can say these little lights pack quite a punch for so little money. If you are looking for a great value, but don't want to sacrifice quality, Go to my video description and click on the link. Don't forget to use promo code COASTALGX to enjoy a sweet 15% off your purchases. Thank you for watching.